Hey all, Trevor here with Right of the Leaf, and today we're going to be diving into another strain from the Violet Tourist. We have tried that Sage and Sour just a couple of weeks ago, so I thought that uh, with the popularity of this strain specifically, we dive in because the quality of that Sage and Sour was quite high. The Black Cherry Punch 3.5 gram bag from Violet Tourist is going to be one that uh, we'll have to compare against our Edison review that we did just a little bit earlier in this year. But with that, you guys, let's go ahead and get our intro in here because we've got quite a bit more talking and quite a bit of bud to review today. Cheers, and I'll see you when we get in here. Welcome back, you guys. And like I said in the intro, we're going to be diving into the Black Cherry Punch Indica Dominant Strain from Violet Tourists. We have picked up and smoked the Sage and Sour Strain from the same LP, and these are actually the same growers that put out the Queen of the Bud product. So if you tried their California Pre Rolls or their Topaz, their Blue Topaz, which is the Slurricane Strain, it's grown by the same company as this Violet Tourist Flower will be. Or the super flowers, they call it. But before we go into any more of that information or really dive into this review in um, full force, we've got to cover exactly what this review is going to be going over so that you guys can either skip to the part that you want to watch or know exactly how it's going to proceed. Now, we start out with the information that's on the packaging, whether it's the bag or the container. That allows you guys to know exactly when the bud was packaged, if you're smoking along with me to compare to see if it's the same batch or if it is going to be one that is a little bit different. Different batches do allow and offer a little bit of a different overall experience. And uh, the handful of times that you guys have picked this up and you've either had the same batch or a different one, and let me know down in the comments, I really do appreciate it. So if you're smoking alongside this review, please let me know how this bud scores for you with this. Now, with the actual review, we cover the information on the container, then we move over to usually and hopefully the licensed producers website which today we aren't able to use so we've gone to our next step down the line which is going to be either the alberta cannabis website or the ontario cannabis stores website both of these um, shops provide the information that is most directly linked to the licensed producer so it is very likely the best information that those producers are providing for those companies because the albertacannabis.org and the OCS, so the Ontario Cannabis Store websites, they are the only legal online sales option for the province of Alberta and the province of Ontario. It's just the way that uh, these provinces have decided to do their legalization. Once we finish off there, we move over into the actual review. We got one step left before we start smoking, and that is to crack open the container and take a look and smell of this bud. We scored out of 10 for our look and aroma. Pretty self-explanatory there. Now, the next two steps do, de do deserve a little bit more explanation, a little bit more depth, but we go into that more so when we get to them. First one being our vaporizer, where we're baking our bud versus burning it. It goes into the ceramic heater here. We run it through three temperatures. Specific terpenes play the factor on why we choose those three temperatures, but I do go over full details when we get to the vaporizer. And then our bongs. We have a very similar approach as the vaporizer with our bongs, where we light it up with three different intensities of heat, as well as um, just different ways of... Uh, starting our bowls up and getting that cherry in there but we will go over the full details of that when we are on that part of the review you guys then to finish up the smoking side we go a little bit more classic with either our elements paper or a regal cigar they both get smoked through the pipe being first and then we smoke our way through the joint talk about the high and each individual point of this review gets scored out of 10 Eights are what we're looking for for that higher score. 48 out of 60 is what we're looking for for the beautiful herbage. If the bud is able to maintain eights all the way down, she gets a 48. If she doesn't, well, we're hoping that we can uh, make up some of the scores where the other side lacks. But with that being said, you guys, that covers the entirety of what we're going to be getting into. So now let's actually cover the information on the container before we go over into the website and uh, get this review rocking the way we like to. So, 
Violet Tourist Super Flower Black Cherry Punch. It is going to be an indica dominant strain. It's a three and a half gram dried cannabis bag. THC total of 21.4%. A CBD total of 0.06%. A little bit on the higher side for the high THC mark. But again, nothing really potent on that CBD side here. We've got a package date of the 1st, or sorry you guys, the 14th of January 2021. And a price point of $37.99. So the Violet Tourist has been putting out a really good quality flower from what I have experienced through the Sage and Sour. Now let's see if the Black Cherry Punch puts out the same overall output, you guys. Because I'm, uh, I'm quite excited for this. But before we can crack that bag and get our beautiful herbage scale intro in here, let's quickly read off the information that the albertacannabis.org offers up to us. It's brought to you by the BRT, so B-R-N-T group. Violet Tourist Black Cherry Punch is a high-potency, terpene-rich, indica-dominant flower that features visually stunning violet tones with a piercing aroma of fruit, subtle floral background notes, and earthy nuances. The Violet Tourist Super Flower Black Cherry Punch is a 3.5 gram bag. It is grown by Cadre Cannabis. The Violet Tourist is just going to be your brand name. Let's scroll on down, quickly cover the terpenes that are all, uh, and, sorry, the terpenes and the flavor options that the website describes. So citrus, hoppy, and floral are your flavor profiles. Your terpene profiles are going to be lemonine at 24.0% with a citrus flavor. Alpha bisabolol, which is going to be floral in flavor, and at 15.3%. And then you got carefleen, which is leaning on the hoppy side of the flavor this time at 20.2 percent and the other terpenes build up the rest maristine and linalol being the two primary ones that the website has to offer but with that you guys that is all the information that we have available on this strain you know exactly what that means it's time to get into our beautiful herb not not into our beautiful herbage well we're hoping it's beautiful herbage, and it's time to get into the herbage scale, you guys. We'll see you on the other side where we're smoking on some black cherry punch from Violet Two. Welcome back, you guys. So let's go ahead and dive into this bag of black cherry punch from the Violet Tourist. So First impressions are a very sweet, very fruity aroma. Holy shit. Like extremely fruity and, and sweet flavor. I am going to want to weigh this out, you guys, because if you look at it, we got three nugs. And one I don't even count as a nug because it's just, I can see where it broke off of the main piece. Let me switch the camera on over. And let you guys take a little look-see at what we have to offer here before we put it up on the scale. See you guys in a second. See, as we slide in here, you guys can tell we've got just the two big nugs. And this, this piece, I'm thinking it fell off right there. Either right there or right at the base of this one. Because you look, we've got just two massive, massive nugs. We've got a nice zero gram on here. The first nug is going to be 2.9. The second nug will get us up to 3.39. Third one will put us at 3.55. So we're just over that eighth on the weight, you guys. But now when it comes to overall color, you can see the purple tones coming into the top of that bud. Got nice even pistol and crystal distribution throughout. It looks really, really nice. The bigger bud definitely has more color than the smaller, but still, it has me quite excited. We are definitely smoking this larger nug than over this one. I'm going to save that guy for later. But let's go ahead and get these girls busted up while I uh, talk my way through what I'm thinking I'm going to give the score. Okay, guys, let's go ahead, put this big nug, this big purple nug back in the bag. It bounds back really, really nicely. When I give it a squeeze, it has a little bit of a break and um, kind of a crushing to it, but that's 
that's going to happen when you get these big pack nugs like this. It's definitely something that uh, that could happen just with the packaging. And it's really the inner portions of this nug that's going to make the determine on whether it's a really fresh smoke or not. So I'm looking forward to that. The aroma that I'm getting off of this bud is absolutely unreal, you guys. It is so potent and so rich in its overall experience and um, offput. And the amount of crystal on the inside of these nugs is unreal, you guys. I, I honestly want to bust it up because I have a feeling that this bud busted up is going to earn it an extra point. And that's... There's certain strains that I will give the benefit of the doubt and judge it on a busted aroma because when the nugs are just this large and um, this well packed, the aroma is a little bit of an undersell until we bust it up. And I'm finding that with my home grow as well. When the buds are nice and densely cured and well packed, you don't get a really potent aroma. But when you bust it up and those terpenes have a chance to off gas and really become aromatic it does well and this strain is another one of those it's got kind of a baked good um experience to it too like almost um like a bakery with doing like a fresh buried like cherry biscuit that type of experience you guys all in all very enjoyable, very exciting. Definitely a 9 out of a 10 for the look and aroma. The size of the buds, the quality of the buds look great. The actual aroma when it's busted up and ready to go is just as incredible and exciting as well, you guys. So I'm going to go ahead, roll up our joint, and uh, get ready to start smoking this through our vaporizer and then eventually through our rigs. Thankfully, to, uh, to the power of editing... This joint roll is only going to take me a second, and I'll see you guys when we are uh, packing up and explaining our boundless CFC vaporizer. Cheers, and let's get into this. Hey, all, and just like I said, thankfully to the power of editing, we are back and <laughs> throwing things around while we dive into our boundless CFC vaporizer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this on, and I'm going to get it started warming up on its way up to 175 degrees Celsius. The reason we start out at 175 degrees Celsius is two primary terpenes, the lemonine and the maricinine. Lemonine, like its name, is going to be based off of the lemon-based flavor. It's going to have that really citrus, acidic, sharp flavor that lemons are known for. The maricinine flavor is going to have a little bit more of a range to it. It does have a little bit of an earthy flavor. It does have a little bit of a woody touch, but the primarily primary experience is going to be a green herbal experience. There is a mango tone that plays as well, so you do get that juicy, fruity flavor, but it does lean on that more acidic side, similar to that lemonine. So those two play very well together. When you have a combination of the two, you can get more of a lemongrass, lemon wood, citronella overall experience, or just a raw rainforest herbal experience. So we start out with that. Let's take a couple hauls, talk you guys through it before we bump up to 205 and go into those details, you guys. Cheers. Initial experience is really light. It's got definitely that hint of a cushy tone. That kind of damp earth flavor to that cush tone, but there's a sharp fruity sweetness to it. I can't really put a finger on what I'm tasting, but it's got, with that earthy cross, I'm getting more of a rich berry, cherry, that kind of an experience, you guys. Now, when we bump up to 205 from this 175, the flavors that I'm experiencing here should get more predominant. 205 is really where your creamy, rich, earthy flavors start to become nice and potent, nice and strong, you guys. A little bit of the extra temperature allows a lot of the other terpenes to boil off and start to actually render more flavor and more overall effect. 205, you get your creamy, your chocolate, your cushy, your earthy, Sometimes your cherry, your more berry flavors, which personally for me lean a little bit more on that cream side, that's where the 205 thrives. The rich, potent flavors, this is usually the temperature that I start to find them at, you guys. With the 175 being light, hinting towards that kind of cherry, rich, earthy flavor, 
205 is going to be nice and tasty if it carries along that way, you guys. But the only way to find out is by pulling on it and finding out. So let's get to it. Okay. Goes on the more wood side. It does lose the kind of cushy flavor, that cushy tone that I was enjoying at the beginning. It does kind of hold on to that little bit of the fruity-esque flavor, that sweeter flavor. But it's by no means exciting or really overwhelming. It's just a light, kind of rich, creamy, buried flavor with just hints of a wood tone to it. Now, 220. That's how we finish this vaporizer off. The reason we finished off with 220 degrees is beta carefleen and the THC boiling points. They both are activated and start to boil off at the 220 degree range. The heaviest effect from the THC as well as the more woodied and peppered experience that the beta carefleen has to offer. So let's get to it and see what we have here. I'm expecting woody flavor. I don't know what uh, what it's going to do, but let's find out, folks. Definitely wooded. It's got a little bit, <coughs> <coughs> a little bit of a pepper bite, which honestly caught me off guard. But it still holds that kind of rich, sweet or sweeter flavor. I wouldn't say a rich flavor, but I would say a rich, sweeter flavor. And all in all, it was. Enjoyable, you guys. It was enjoyable enough for me to really be able to sit down and uh, and find the flavors through each of the levels that actually were nice. But let's go ahead, dump that out so that we can move on the line, move on down the line to our next chunk of uh, reviewable content. And that is going to be our bongs. What we're going to do is we're going to run it through three different temperatures. First and foremost, hemp wick. This is the lowest ignition source temperature. It allows the bong to really milk and boil and burn up that bud and get all of the terpenes and as much of a potent flavor as we can experience through the rigs. Hemp wick, first way we experience it. Most milked and slowest way to, uh, to smoke it, I find, for getting that bowl to snap. Secondly, most common way. Straight up clipper lighter, Bic, any uh, any just lighter from your pocket. That's how we take our second rip and typically is our most common. And that's why I like using the beaker. And then finally, we got our tower cyclone rig. That gets hit with the uh, jet lighter. That really does cherry up and pop up the, the flavor in these strains. But it's not the most common way and it's definitely not the, uh, the smoothest way to smoke some of these strains. Each, ha each way have a different um, overall experience and flavor to uh, to have. So that's why we like uh, diving into it this way. So we really give this bud as much of an opportunity and uh, chance to present itself as flavorful and uh, enjoyable as possible, you guys. But with that being said, I flapped my gums long enough. Let's get to smoking this bud. Cheers, y'all, and I'll uh, see you on the other side. So, I realized that I uh, forgot to score the vaporizer before we moved on. So, let's go ahead and do that. A 6 out of 10 is what I ended up scoring the vaporizer overall for its experience and its flavor. It had just enough flavor that it really 
spike my interest, but it was just kind of a, mm, all right. All in all, an overall in in uplifting flavor, but and uh, it just it didn't carry enough to really have me excited. It piqued my interest, but that's about it. Now, moving into our bongs, we're gonna give it a seven out of a ten for the flavor and the overall experience of the bongs. The, the flavor in and of itself is building right now, but it's kind of reached where it would cap and it's just holding and it's just, it's building up more the transition of the flavor from the sweeter, creamy flavor, which is that berry, cherry kind of an experience that, I, that I'm finding. Like any, any strains that say, well, berry experience, creamy, creamy with the fruit flavoring, like that's. That's how it comes across to me. The cherry falls right in with there with the with that berry flavor. Now, overall, it did have a nice, sweet, rich flavor through each of the bongs. But the key selling point for me is whether it's going to have that nice, strong, earthy, almost cushy tone to it that pushes through on that end that side that that, that undertone that really kind of tops up this flower and really puts it over the edge. It had that on that very last hoot and it had it for a very light, very short amount of time. But if I could have experienced that through all three rigs, we'd be giving it an eight or higher. But the fact that I just got it with the jet lighter is a little bit disappointing. I'm curious to see if a big, Big, big bowl packed into our uh, nice glass beaker bong and with the clipper lighter. That'll make any difference because that does like to uh, accumulate quite a bit of heat and almost simulate what the jet lighter's like when it comes to the end because that, that very base of the bowl gets quite hot when uh, you like the heat circulate in there and uh, build up and burn its way down. But with that being said, you guys, we're going to move and transition on into the Regal. I have... I have some interesting thoughts on this. I, I really don't know where it's going to go with the flavor. If it takes that sour flavor and kind of runs with it and goes on the more creamed sour, almost like a creamed creamed diesel experience would be almost the best way to, to describe how I hope it goes. Um, or it takes that wood side and puts it into a nice, sweet, earthy wood combo. Either of those would be ones that I'd be quite happy and quite impressed with, but we're not going to know until we light it up and start smoking it. So why the hell we're still talking, I do not know. Let's get to smoking. Cheers. I will give it a 7 out of a 10 for the taste from a pipe, you guys. Honestly, it took more of a creamed wood flavor, like a sweetened wood flavor. And it's almost using that sour side to just make it more like a blackberry like more that type of overall output for flavor and it's it's enjoyable you guys it's quite nice and it was relatively smooth through the pipe and it stayed smooth now that i'm sitting here all in all it's an enjoyable experience it's seven out of ten because it did complement the flavor that was there before and just accelerate upon it and improve upon it you guys so not much else to say about that bud but not bad not bad at all now let's go through get our taste from a joint the first couple dry hauls through here see what we have to expect before we light up this uh little uh, joint and uh start smoking and scoring cheers <sighs> nice rich cherry flavor Just incredibly fruity, you guys. Incredibly fruity. Let's uh, spark it up and see if it smokes the same. Welcome back, you guys. So, for the taste from our joint, I'm going to end up giving it a 9 out of a 10. Honestly, the overall experience and how smooth the smoke was is absolutely incredible. 100% the most enjoyable way I've smoked this strain. It really does have 
a nice, strong, potent cherry flavor that just sits there and builds and builds as you smoke your way through it. It's the joint that you guys saw. I got about three hauls in and I just sat back and just kind of closed my eyes or let my eyes hang low and just kind of fucking chilled out for a bit. Really, really enjoyable strain. Nine out of 10 for the taste for enjoyment. It just didn't, it doesn't have enough potency or real flavor to get me excited to give it a 10, but it has everything else. The smooth, the a, a nice, strong flavor, but not strong in the ways that I would like it. Smooth, easy smoking. Just nice butt for rolling up into a joint and smoking. Just not perfect. When we come to the high, god damn if we didn't get the same thing. Just about perfect. Has a nice, strong, easy body high that hits right away and then just kind of leaves you and then comes back again. Like it, it hit, the body high hits right away really intensely. And then you get the wave that floods from your body. Like it slams your body and then it waves up into your head. And then it kind of finds a, that equilibrium, right? That balance between the two. Then it holds there. So I've got a really nice body ease and relaxation. My back's not tight anymore. I've got the nice relaxing neck muscles like everything that's sore from doing a lot of the moving around and rearranging that we did isn't quite as sore anymore and it's feeling a lot better and more enjoyable to sit here and smoke through the strain now the mental effect it's a heavy like a very heavy mental drift you guys it's taking a lot of effort for me to stay on focus and stay like zoned right in and it's really one of those strains where it'll be good before you wrap your day up. Like I'm, I'm probably going to need a shower and a cup of coffee to kind of reset myself um, after smoking this, you guys. But all in all, very incredible strain. Nice and potent. Definitely one of the, my top tier indica strains that I've, that I've found myself. Um, the Bubba, the Super Skunk. I would put right along this level. Um, the Mac 1's kind of a tier above this, but it ain't far, you guys. Raider Kush, tier above this. Hawaii Heartbreak, more on this level. Um, close. The the Quadra, this level. Like, some really, really high level strange, you guys. Um, would be on this level. A good, a really good Gorilla Glue. Stuff like that. The Moby Dick Crumble. Not Moby Dick Crumble, uh, White Rhino Crumble from Verse Originals. The Moby Dick Crumble from from Rolling Terps, like some of my favorite continuous continual smokers are uh, are right along this level of high, and I think this Black Cherry Punch is going to be become one of those. It's not one I think I'll be pulling out during the streams often, but I think it'll be a good one to kind of wrap the day up. But um, with that, you guys, I think it's a good time to wrap this video up with the last. Two nines for the score with the high getting a nine out of a ten as well. 47 out of 60. One point shy, you guys. That beautiful herbage. We almost made it again. Almost made it again. Um, but we, uh, we're just a little shy. And, and that's okay. I'm okay with us having some buds that are punching right around that, that 48 marker but not quite getting there. Then... At least this gives you, the people who are waiting for that beautiful herb, it just gives you something to give a shot, right? Because personally, anything 42 plus, if it's got a component that you really are looking forward to, to trying, like the Ogen strains, those were all 40 plus scoring strains. They didn't score 48, but they were still really high recommendation strains or ones I always go to and recommend if people are looking for a specific type of flavor or a specific effect. And that's the thing, is 40s plus, in my opinion, 42 to 43, if you want to be a little bit on that pickier edge, you're going into a really nice and enjoyable experience when you get that 46, 47, 48 plus, 
we're getting into some some top quality top quality flour right you guys so i'm looking forward to seeing how the next batch of bud does because we've got some 15 grams of strawberry cough we're going to be reviewing it's at a nice and uh low thc point though this time so i'm curious to see how bonafide did with it and uh we've got a green apple 510 vape cart that we're diving into on thursday but with that you guys let's wrap this one up it's going to be a little bit of a longer one but I'm enjoying making these reviews and uh, putting out this content for you. And again, we've hit that 500 subs and we are flying past it, you guys. I can't say thank you enough to each and every one of you. Right at this moment, let me pull it up. We are at 512, 512 subs. I cannot believe it, you guys. Thank you so much to each and every one of you for helping us get here. And uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, please help be one of the first thousand because that's the next big goal i've got set for myself is thousand subs um let's see how quick we can get there one five thirteen i just watched it switch i just watched it switch you guys this is crazy i can't believe this thank you let's continue to grow this channel continue to grow this community i l really do appreciate each and every one of you more than you can understand but let's wrap this one up so we can get on and start pushing for some more content for uh, the time being, end card's going to slide in here. You hover over the logo, you click that subscribe button, and you uh, hit the bell notification so that you know anytime one of my videos go live. Down below, I will have two videos for excuse me, two videos for you. One will be the most recommended. The other one will be the most recently uploaded. Please click on either of those and anything else I have to offer under the Red Leaf flag. We also got the Red Leaf Gaming page for you guys to go and check out. All of my Twitch live streams will be uploaded there, either the day of or the day after, just depending on how busy I get with my schedule for uh, getting the cannabis-based content up here for you guys to enjoy. But with that being said, let's wrap this one up. Cheers, y'all, and I'll see you in the next one.